Oh, it's terrible. I, I mean, to see these kids who, who cannot find anything to eat. There are no jobs. I mean, 90 plus percent employment rate. You know, the first time I ever went to Swaziland, I'll never forget, I was with the missionary and we're driving over these hills, beautiful hills. I mean, it's not desert like, like I thought. I thought I was going into the Sahara Desert, but a beautiful place. And, and there's nobody around. I mean, there's these sporadic homesteads out everywhere. And we're going out to this feeding center. And I said to the missionary, I said, there's nobody out here. I mean, how, how could you feed anybody out here? He goes, oh, no. Mm -hmm. They've seen the dust from our tires That's right. as far as five miles away, and they're already walking. Yeah. And I thought, well, okay. So we get to, the, yeah. to, this, to this feeding center on the top of this hill, and there were a few kids there. But then all of a sudden, this little four-year-old and three-year-old, uh, four-year-old boy, three-year-old girl, no shoes, you know, you know, ripped clothes, walking hand in hand over the hills. Mm -hmm. and, and pretty soon we were surrounded by hundreds of kids. Why? Because they were coming for a meal. Mm -hmm. that, that was the only meal that they would get. Uh, that was the only place that they would receive love and, and connection with these Go-Go's and mm -hmm. other people that you're talking about. And it's that way all across the country. So it's devastating. I mean, one of the things about Swaziland that I heard a UN statistic that if something different doesn't happen by the year 2050, Swaziland will cease to exist. Well, you know what? Uh, about four or five years ago, the king of Swaziland made a speech while I was there. Uh, not in Swaziland, I was in another part of Southern Africa. But he made a speech about the same time as the president of Botswana make, made a speech. They, they, they made separate speeches. I'm sure they weren't concurring with, or, or, or consulting with each other. Both of them said basically the same thing. If current rates of infection continue, our nation faces extinction. Mm. They used the E word. Mm. Now, the unfortunate thing in Swaziland is the king is not really a sterling example, is he, mm -hmm. of sexual um, uh, restraint. No, no. He has 13 wives, yeah. and, and uh, even though you have signs across the country that, that say, you, you know, be faithful, uh, everything that the culture does is the exact opposite to that. Yeah. So, you're meeting some pastors and some churches, uh, as am I. What are you seeing? What, what, how are churches responding in Swaziland to this horrific issue? You know, it's funny because I see two things. I see the, the churches who kind of have bought into the, to the prosperity movement that yeah. we've imported from the West, right. not very involved. Yeah. But I tell you, I've seen some of the greatest heroes uh, and the yeah. people I respect more than anyone else in, in, in my life are these pastors who are on the ground by faith. And when they talk about by faith, it's a totally different story than what I think about by faith, who are taking care of these widows, taking care of these orphans, establishing these community care points when they have absolutely nothing. Uh, Pastor Walter, who I write about in this book, is one of those heroes for me. And, and Pastor Walter, he, there are days that he, you know, when he, when he first started this ministry, he said, God, send me some rich people. I, I'm a poor man. And God said, well, Walter, what's in your own pocket? You sow the seed. You start with what's in your own pocket. And he said, there were days when my own children didn't eat, when I was sending other people's kids to school and, and I wasn't sending my own kids to school. And so, you know, that is the thing where you see the, the kingdom of God establish these, these incredible churches. I tell you, some of the best church services I've ever been in in my life are, are in these kinds of uh, places. I, 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 I pull no punches when I'm preaching in churches uh, in North America, you know, and they can be very active, very, very lively. I say, you know, compared to the African churches, you guys are dead from the ankles up. I mean, <laughs> that's right, that's right. There's just no comparison at all. But the thing about it is, it's not contrived, it's not cultural. Uh, when Jesus is your only hope, when he is your only source, your only uh, helper, your only healer, you have no money for a $5 course of anti antibiotics. When Jesus is everything, and if he doesn't show up, you die, mm. this brings true vitality to worship. Boy, it's, it's a totally different thing. And, and what they tell you when you're there is they said, hey, you've heard about the prophecy in Swaziland, haven't you? And you say, prophecy? No, I haven't heard any prophecy. Well, but Swaziland is gonna be the pulpit of all of Africa. You're like, you're thinking, now here you are, you know, almost a 50% AIDS rate, total devastation, no, everything we've talked about. And, and I said to them, well, w w how could you be the pulpit of all of Africa? And in turn, they said, because we have no hope but Jesus. And when Jesus comes and he saves our people and he starts to heal us of this deadly disease, AIDS, the whole world is going to see and glorify him and Swaziland will become the pulpit of all of Africa. May it be so. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, they, that is the only hope they have. Well, you know, I've, I've believed and, and, and preached for many years that I believe God's going to bless the world out of Africa. Mm. You know, a lot of people have written it off. Um, by the way, I just got back from India. The situation there is horrific. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not as much coming out in terms of government stats, but this thing is sweeping the world. And you're really onto something here, Tom. Uh, both your books, uh, Fields of the Fatherless and this one, Scared, 
um, are really excellent reads. And I, I would say to our viewers, um, you know, you might find a conversation like this to be a, a touch uh, scary. You know, uh, who are these guys and, and w what is this and, and are they serious? And I would say, yeah, absolutely. This is, this is the 21st century. This is the world we're living in now, friends. Um, we, um, we were indulged, I think, by our Heavenly Father after two world wars in the 20th century and he let us think for 50 years that Christianity was all about us. This is, this is, this is the century of hardball. Uh, and, and this 21st century is a time when you're going to see more and more Christian activism. And in fact, Tom, um, this is what I am seeing. And you mentioned young adults. I'm absolutely encouraged by what I'm mm. seeing in young adults. Young adults get it. Yeah, they're the future, and uh, both in, in Africa and here in the West. And one of the things that we're doing, by the way, is uh, people want something practical that they can do, you know, yeah. when, after they read a book like this. In Africa, they tell me, you know, you ask them what's their number one need. Well, you would think they would say food, because many of them are starving to death. They say, no, it's education, yeah. because without an education, we're going to die anyway. So one of the things we did, and people can find out at scaredthebook.com, is we're raising a million dollars to give away for scholarships, primary, secondary, university degree education for kids in Africa. We're gonna do this all throughout Africa. Uh, this little girl, Adana, you'll find out, is a prodigy poet. Uh, it's my belief that God has gifted each of these kids uniquely. I mean, they're not throwaways, they have incredible gifts. Well, she has this incredible gift of writing. So we're doing a writing contest and we're giving away the grand prize of an all expense paid, primary, secondary, university degree education in three categories. Poetry, memoir, and short story. Mm -hmm. And so we're promoting literacy, promoting education. Uh, we're giving them stipends and book bags and all kinds of things. It's starting right now in, in Swaziland is the first country. And what we're going to do on scaredthebook.com is put the top entries, and people will be able to see the stories of those kids, read their entry, and then vote for the winner. Scaredthebook.com. Tom Davis is the author, and he's a guy who's making a difference. Thanks, Tom. Hey, thank you, Jim.